You've probably heard people complaining about their new mobile phone. They don't want it to take photos or play music or talk to their clothes dryer. They just want it to make and receive phone calls. And there's a hardcore group of off-road enthusiasts who feel pretty much the same way about modern four-wheel drives. They don't want a heated steering wheel. They don't want city boys sat nav. They don't want TV screens in the headrests. They just want a vehicle that will take them anywhere with a minimum of fuss and a maximum of traction. And that's where this vehicle, for that demographic, might just come in. This is the Ineos Grenadier. Now, this has been a long time coming, and unfortunately, I'm not allowed to drive this car because it's a squillion dollar prototype. But I am going for a joyride to see exactly what sort of off-road, old school smarts 85K buys. And you're coming with me. But first, let's have a little bit of a look at the tech in this vehicle. Rather than reinvent the engine, Ineos simply went out and bought the best engine it could find. So, under the bonnet of the Grenadier is a 3-litre turbo petrol inline 6 for the North American and Middle Eastern markets, predominantly. And a 3-litre turbo diesel engine for the rest of the world, including us. Although, Australia will also have the option of the petrol engine at the same price as the diesel, which is a bit strange as car makers tend to charge more for their diesel variants. Then again, Ineos is not your average car company. Both engines are the work of BMW and the 8-speed automatic transmission is the familiar ZF unit. But here's where it gets interesting. Unlike many four-wheel drives which are heading to unitary construction and on-demand all-wheel drive, the Grenadier sticks with a body-on-frame design and uses constant all-wheel drive and, count them, three lock-in differentials. And an independent front suspension? Not even close. The Grenadier has live axles at both ends for maximum wheel articulation. And while the 8-speed automatic shifter looks very familiar, the high-low shifter is not the usual rotary knob but a proper lever. That's hardcore right there. Step inside and while the Grenadier does in fact have both Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, in every other way it's a pretty butch statement. The central switch panel looks like it's from a rally car. The roof console with its pre-wired switches for accessories is apparently stolen from a World War II bomber, or so it seems. The floor coverings are rubber and there are even floor drain plugs for hose outs after a muddy weekend away. There are fewer computers than most modern 4x4s, Ineos says about half, and the Grenadier is started with a physical key, not a starter button and a proximity key that gets dropped near the campfire in the dark or rolled up inside the tent each morning. There are some truly clever design features around the vehicle too. Buttons that can be operated with gloves on, a track around the waistline of the vehicle into which tables, shovels and axes can be clipped, a roof rail system that doesn't require actual roof bars, removable safari windows, a front bumper that forms a workbench or picnic seat, and even a space in the spare wheel for storing gear and all sorts of easy clean surfaces inside. It's very well thought out. But enough chat. How does it all go when the bitumen stops? Well, the first thing I noticed was that the suspension is actually a little firmer than I thought it might be. It's not exactly a buckboard like the first coil sprung Nissan patrols were, but it's no Range Rover either. But even with the spring rates it carries, there's clearly a lot of axle articulation available. That'll be the live axles then. And the Grenadier promises to be a decent thing to drive on the bitumen, although we didn't actually get to test that. There's clearly no lack of grip on the fairly aggressive tyres fitted to this car, and even though this prototype lacks the locking front and rear differentials of the production version, we didn't even really need to use the centered locking diff for what was a fairly gentle test ride up a decent sized hill with a few muddy patches thrown in. There were a few dips and lumps to test ramp over and approach and departure angles, and the Grenadier just laughed at those. Clearly, this will be a very serious piece of hardware in the real world. I was also pleased to see that the relatively short bonnet and high seating position give you a good view to the front, although the relatively small and very upright windows don't exactly make the cabin feel very airy. We rode in the turbo diesel version of the Grenadier and the overriding impression is of how smooth this engine really is. You'd be hard pressed to pick it as a diesel over a petrol and there didn't seem to be any real lag or problem at all shifting the Grenadier's bulk from a standstill. There was one clunk from the 8-speed automatic but 
been an early prototype without the full production driveline protocols in place, it can't even shift between high and low range on the fly, for instance, and the production version will, we can forgive it that. But you know what impresses me most? It's that INEOS has the confidence in the concept to let a bunch of motoring journalists anywhere near the thing, let alone take them for a ride in it. There is absolutely no way any mainstream car maker would let a journo even into the same suburb as a prototype as raw as this one. So INEOS's attitude is truly refreshing. And I reckon it also says a lot about the can-do approach that has taken the Grenadier as far as it's already come. Now, I'm just waiting for the production version and a drive of my own. Meantime, check out all the INEOS Grenadier stories on the Cars Guide website, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon. So the only thing you're probably still wondering about is the name. And frankly, I would have chosen a name that didn't contain the word grenade. But that's just me. The story goes that the boss of Ineos, Sir Jim Ratcliffe, was having a beer in a London pub called the Grenadier when he came up with the idea with this tough, no frills off-roader. So that's how it got its name. I reckon he's just lucky he wasn't drinking in the bag of spanners or the broken rocker arms. I'll see myself out.